Welcome to this Windows Server Basics video. My name is Oren Thomas. I've been writing Windows Server textbooks for more than 20 years, and I work at Microsoft on a variety of things related to Windows Server and hybrid cloud. In this video, we're going to talk about deploying an Enterprise Root Certificate Authority on Windows Server. An Enterprise Root CA allows you to integrate certificates directly into Active Directory. Before I start explaining the different types of certificate authorities, let's start by deploying the role. And I'll explain some of the theory as we go through the installation wizard. To give you the background on today's lab environment, all computers are virtual machines. Running Windows Server 25. The computer we will be working to install the role on is a domain joined server named tailwind-root-ca. To start the installation of a certificate authority, we choose Add Roles and Features from the Manage menu of the Server Manager console. We select Role-based or Feature-based installation. We select our target server, which happens to be the one we are signed onto. In the list of server roles, we choose Active Directory Certificate Services. You would choose this option even if you wanted to deploy a standalone server on a computer that is not joined to a domain, which is something we will cover in a later basics video. When you select this option, you get the additional option of installing all of the relevant management tools. We get an important warning that the name and domain setting of the computer cannot be changed after the certification authority role is installed. In environments where you might need to rename your organization, it's probably easier to deploy a new Enterprise Root CA and retire the previous one, though that's definitely complicated and a lot of work. On the Role Services page, we are choosing both Certification Authority and Certification Authority Web Enrollment. The first is the Certification Authority and all its basic parts. The second is a special web app that allows for certificate enrollment through a browser. This isn't something we'll follow up on in this video, but we'll be using it in later videos about standalone and offline certificate authorities. When we select this option, we get all the necessary ancillary features in Internet Information Services that are required to support this web application. We click through the rest of the wizard and choose Install. The Active Directory Certificate Services role installs. We close the wizard. We then click on the caution item next to the flag. This launches the ADCS configuration wizard. The first thing we are asked for is the credentials we want to use. To deploy an Enterprise Certificate Authority in an Active Directory environment, the account you use needs to be a member of the Enterprise Admins Group in the Forest Root domain and the Domain Admins Group of the domain in which the CA will be installed. As always, you could delegate the specific permissions to a special security group but that level of complexity is beyond the scope of this video. I add the prime account credentials to the wizard and choose next. When confronted with the role services to configure page, you need to start with the certification authority role. If you try to select multiple roles here, you'll be presented with a helpful reminder that you need to get the foundation configured before you get into the ancillary services. The first big question we are asked during Certification Authority setup is whether we want an Enterprise CA or a standalone CA. An Enterprise Certificate Authority is fully integrated with Active Directory and leverages its services for certificate issuance and management. It uses certificate templates, supports auto-enrollment and automatically publishes certificates and certificate revocation lists to Active Directory, allowing for seamless authentication and authorization within the domain. A standalone CA operates independently of Active Directory, does not use certificate templates, and requires manual approval for each certificate request. Standalone CAs do not support auto-enrollment or automatic publication of certificates to Active Directory, 
making them suitable for environments where certificates are issued to entities outside the domain or where tighter control over certificate issuance is necessary. We choose Enterprise Certificate Authority because that's what this particular video is about, but recommended best practice is to create an offline root CA and then use the offline root CA to configure the signing certificate of an enterprise subordinate CA. The next question we are asked is whether we want the CA to be a root or subordinate CA. A root certificate authority is the top level CA in a public key infrastructure hierarchy whose certificate is self-signed and serves as the ultimate trust anchor for all certificates issued within that hierarchy. It is universally trusted and typically kept highly secure, often offline, to protect its private key. Because it's integrated directly with Active Directory, an enterprise CA must always be online. A subordinate certificate authority, also known as an intermediate CA, operates under the root CA and has its certificate issued by the root. It can issue certificates to end entities or further subordinate CAs. The main difference is that the root CA is the original source of trust and security in the PKI, while subordinate CAs inherit trust from the root CA and handle day-to-day -day certificate issuance and management, allowing for scalable and organized distribution of trust. As mentioned earlier, in best practice environments, you have multiple tiers of certificate authority, but this is a YouTube demo, so I'll make you aware of best practice, but won't actually follow it. On the private key page, we choose create a new private key as we are deploying a new certificate authority. The reason you'd use an existing one is if you were recovering an existing CA. When we create a private key, we specify the cryptographic options. As this is your root CA's private key, I bump the default from SHA-256 to SHA-512. I'm asked for the name of the CA. Here I change it to simplify. We then configure the validity period for the CA certificate. This validity period should always exceed the validity period of any certificate that the CA will issue and you'll need to renew this certificate to extend the validity period. We accept default settings for database and logs and choose configure. The enterprise root CA is now deployed. We open the certification authority console from the tools menu. By default, an enterprise CA will only issue certificates from 11 pre-configured templates. There are far more default templates available and eventually I'll do a whole video on what your options are. If you want to have the CA be able to issue certificates based on one of the extra templates, right click on Certificate Templates and select New, and then Certificate Template to issue. From the list of available templates, select the one you want to issue. For demonstration purposes, I select the Code Signing Certificate Template. This adds the code signing template as a possible certificate type that this Enterprise Root Certificate Authority can issue. To perform a basic demonstration on how an Enterprise CA works when issuing certificates, I'm going to open a Microsoft Management Console, add the certificate snap in scoped to the local computer, and request a computer certificate. Active Directory also allows you to configure automatic enrollment through group policy but as I've said a few times already, that's going to be the subject of another video. Here we select the personal store of the computer account. At the moment, there is a single certificate Tailwind Traders Tailwind Root. To request a new certificate, I right click on Certificates and select Request New Certificates. Because the Enterprise Root CA is integrated with Active Directory, the MMC Snap In queries. Active Directory for a Certificate Enrollment Policy. We go with the default Active Directory Enrollment Policy. A check is performed to determine what certificate templates the computer account is eligible to enroll in. We select the Computer Certificate Template, 
which is the default available option unless you've made modifications to certificate templates and permissions and choose Enroll. The computer enrolls in the certificate template, with all of the computer's Active Directory information being used to populate the certificate request. We can see now that we have two separate certificates sitting in this node with the new certificate being tailwind-root-ca.tailwindtraders.internal, which is the DNS name of the computer. When we return to the Certification Authority console, we can view the list of issued certificates and see that the certificate we just requested through the MMC was issued. And that's the basics on deploying an Enterprise Root Certificate Authority on Windows Server.